Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Survivor Org Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Connors. I have with me a very special guest from Survivor Nicaragua, the one, the only, Tyrone Davis. Tyrone, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, Tyrone, what have you been up to? Uh, shoot, man. Since Survivor on CBS, I've been surviving in life. You know, I, uh, I'm all over the place, man. I got, I got a few things I'm working on. You know, I... Uh, DJ, I have a DJ business, and I do personal training. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing some speaking engagements, um, and I'm also working on a book, um, and just enjoying life, and, and also, you know, my primary job as a fire captain, um, that's been keeping me busy, and that, that in itself is survival. <laughs> So you're being a fire captain still, you're writing a book, you're doing a DJ business, and you're personally training people. When do you sleep? Uh, <laughs> whenever I can, you know. Uh, but I'm working on that. I'm, I'm working on being... How did you first get on the Survivor? Well, uh, well, actually a buddy of mine who happened to work uh, for a different fire agency, uh, he was out, and when he, when he came back, uh, he, said, he said that uh, someone had came by and left the card, you know, saying if they, you know, if they, they were looking for someone athletic over 40 mm -hmm. and, you know, might be interested in Survivor. He said he could only think of me and one other uh, friend that we have in common. And uh, I just followed up. That's where it all started, with uh, a phone call, you know. I mean, it was just a fluke, and that happens sometimes. <laughs> and I'm thankful for the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? And I just took advantage of it, man. It was an awesome experience. Well, how long were you a fan of the show before actually going on it? Um, I, I've watched it. I mean, I, I don't watch, haven't watched it as much as some, but I've watched it more than others, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, I, I, so, I don't know, maybe five years, six years or so, you know, but I enjoyed the show. And in the beginning, I think it was a, a, maybe a little more cutthroat and conniving. And, you know, I looked at that and I was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, when, when, when the show first started, uh -huh. you know, back with Richard Hatch. So, yeah. you know, but it is what it is. You, you, you put it, you keep it in perspective, everything is good. What was your strategy going into the game? Uh, my strategy going into the game was to uh, manage other people's perception of me, right? Mm -hmm. And to be, uh, make an effort to be as likable as possible. And, um, you know what I'm saying? And, and try to connect with people who I thought were, uh, more sincere and, uh, if you will, loyal, for lack of better terms. Yeah. You know, but to survivor, loyalty. <laughs> like <laughs> change in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know? So did you see that? That was, uh, that was pretty. Go ahead. I was going to say, did you see these qualities of loyalty and your early alliance with Marty, or how did that work out? Um, I didn't know I had an alliance with Marty. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> That's not the it, point. It, it kind of made it look like on the show that you two had some sort of relationship, like that, because I believe y'all guys voted the same way when you were together. Um, yeah, we voted the same way, but we voted differently. If Marty, in fact, has uh, tried to, you know, tell me to vote a certain way, and I said, well, I'll vote the way I'm going to vote. But we weren't in an alliance, to my knowledge. And then, you, you know, editing uh, tends to make people look a certain way. You know, they, they, they have to tell a story, too, you know what I mean? Um, and, and actually, in retrospect, one of the biggest things that I, I would do differently is to um, be more assertive in, in developing alliances. You know what I'm saying? Um, some people were playing the game more aggressively than others. Like, I could definitely see that the, uh, the younger tribe was playing the game more aggressively than, than we were, you know what I mean, in my mind, based on what I saw. Um, so that's, that's my, one of my biggest strategies going in when I do get selected to go back, fingers crossed, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I do get selected to return, um, I um, will definitely make more of an effort to connect early on, you know. So that, that's what I would do differently, but I don't, I, I, me and Marty didn't have an alliance Yeah. Well, what were all. some of your early relationships like on your tribe of the older people, and especially ones that we didn't get to see? Um, 
Well, the relationships were, uh, you mean as far as who I connected with in general? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. One of the people I connected with were uh, Jimmy T, uh, Jill, and uh, Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, I connected with them, I thought. Jimmy Johnson, not as much, but, you know, um, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that would be about it early on, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and throughout, probably, you know. <laughs> what was Jimmy Johnson? And that's why I, I, uh, Jimmy Johnson is uh, it's a regular dude. He's actually a pretty cool cat. You know, he, he, he reminds me a lot of a fireman. You know, he tells a lot of stories. Uh, you know, very engaging guy. Um, and I admire the fact that he was able to get out there and, and you know, do his thing at his age, you know. Uh, he's a trooper. <laughs> he's a trooper, you know. But he just, he just, uh, you wouldn't know that he, uh, you know, has the fame that he has or, you know, uh, has accomplished all that he has in life. So, you know, unless, unless you just think he's a regular, regular guy that likes to tell stories and have fun. <laughs> well, was it hard when he left on you? When he what? When he uh, got voted out. How did that impact you and your Oh, game? when he got, when, when he, he got voted out, um, well, <laughs> he would, have been, he would uh, continue to be the tribe, the leader of the tribe, and then the ex wouldn't have been on my back. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the way it shifted, I think, um, is that, you know, I became, so to speak, the tribe leader. Uh, it just kind of evolved that way. And, and that's a dangerous spot to be in, you know. <laughs> you know, it was what it was. I was actually going to ask about that. Did you realize that you were being the leader um, and try to stop yourself from being the leader, or did you just happen to do it so naturally that you didn't really notice what was going on? Um, um, well, actually, as I remember, a couple of people, um, I remember there were some brief comments, like some ramblings about it, you know. Um, but I, um, I think it was more, it was kind of organic, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, um, and in, in retrospect, I mean, yeah, you know, it's cool to be a leader but not a survivor necessarily. Um, I mean, it's dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, then, and then, too, it was, um, what's the term? It was, it was, you're the guy that everybody's looking at, you know what I mean? In retrospect, in retrospect, would I be the leader? Uh, probably not. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I had my brothers. What did you make of the older people versus younger people twist? Uh, I was very excited about the older people versus younger people twist because I, I've, I've been on the planet for a few years, but I, I uh, don't think I'm as old as the number dictates, and I don't subscribe to that. So, mm -hmm. And even in, at, uh, at the gym, you know, I play ball with guys, you know, half my age, literally, and, and I give them the blues, you know. I, you know, that's right. They say, come on, old school. Right? And he's talking trash. And they say, come on, old school. I say, okay. And then I take him to the basket and uh, embarrass him. And I say, this old school, this old cat just schooled you. <laughs> you know, just talking junk like that. And I really do. You know, I, I, I'm, because I'm pretty competitive. You know, I, I do like triathlons and uh, things of that nature. I've done a few of those. And I, I just like staying active, you know, and the fact that I, I, my personality is to be positive, upbeat, and optimistic about all things, you know what I'm saying? Some days, as, as some days are um, more challenging than others, but I always try to stay in a happy space, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And, and, and that's older versus younger. I, what I was thinking, too, was that, hey, we, uh, uh, the older tribe, the values were different would be different than the younger tribe. We would probably stick together a little bit more, maybe. We would, you know what I'm saying, um, strategize a little better, mm -hmm. you know, but in the game, it's, it's survivors, <laughs> you know, and I, I thought the kids, I thought the kids, just like they were, I call them kids, but the younger tribe, I, I anticipated them it being a little bit of chaos because, you know, um, I, I just anticipated a little bit of chaos. Because uh, it's it's different generation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, different I mean, generation. Young kids, we're really hard to like get in a group and to stay focused. I can tell you that firsthand. Right, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. But no, no, it really is. It's just, I mean, it's just when I was 
when I was 25, 30, I wasn't the guy that I am now. You know what I'm saying? That's just life, and it is what it is. And we saw that in the tribe, the cutthroat shenanigans that were going on. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Um, easy and, and probably not as easy for them to handle emotions, you know, as a, but it is what it is, you know. And just because we were the older tribe and have been on the planet longer does not at all mean that uh, – does not at all mean that we had it all figured out. We had the, you know, necessarily the advantage. And um, like I thought about the fact about challenges, you know, physical challenges in particular, um, you know, I personally uh, welcomed them because, you know, like I said, that's what I thrive on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, did, I think I did pretty good in, in the challenges we had, right? Um, so, I mean, you know, I was looking forward to to taking care of business with that, and I, I knew they had some younger athletic people, and, you know, we had some older yeah. folks. <laughs> so it is what it is, and, and, and that played out that way, too. <laughs> you know, what, what did are we you, probably one, huh? Did you think it was going to be as lopsided as it was? I didn't, I didn't think that at all. Um, and that's what I was going to say. We didn't, we didn't really win very many challenges. I didn't anticipate that at all, mm -hmm. but... You know, it, it is what it is, and I don't know if that's what motivated the switch or if the switch was planned early on, you know. Well, um, I can tell you from my past Survivor knowledge that the switch would have happened no matter what because Survivor has a recurring right. theme. Whenever they separate tribes into anything that's just not normal tribes, they always switch it up, like when it's men versus women, when, it's, uh, when they did the thing with the four tribes and they were all different ethnic groups, they always try to switch it up within the third or fourth episode. So what did you think right. of Nayanka, and especially her almost quitting around the time you left? In the game, you know, I thought um, she was playing the game. Um, she didn't, and when, you know, when they switched tribes, I kind of knew that she was kind of shifty, just mm -hmm. from, you know, little brief conversations, because, uh, you know, I can, I can read that. I read that when, when we talked, because we kind of, don't live far from each other. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're, we're both in uh, L.A. area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I know her neighborhood and my neighborhood. It's, it's kind of similar. So you get to read people a little bit. That's, that's, I think that's a little bit uh, that they age gave to my advantage. Yeah. But anyway, he, uh, I'm sorry, she was, she was crafty. And I thought she was good at what she did. She, she was manipulating some folks and so on and so forth. Um, quitting afterwards, uh, I thought that was bizarre. Did it um, upset you to see her quit when you got voted out like that? Um, no, nah, it didn't upset me. I mean, I wasn't, I just, you know, I don't get upset. I mean, it's a game. Like I said, I keep it in perspective, you know. Um, I wish she would have quit the night she was talking about quitting. <laughs> you know, I might have had a longer, a longer life. Because yeah. she was talking about quitting in the shelter when she was, uh, you know, it was raining and whatnot. Yeah, I think I even gave her my jacket, but I was like, wow, you know. But, you know, she, she made it happen, and she, uh, she stayed, and I was gone. You know, and, 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 actually, and actually, when they did the merge, I was like, oh, snap. I was like, it's not a matter of if, but when. I knew it was, I knew it was certain, right? And, in fact, I told uh, Eve that, you know, I knew that, uh, me and Holly didn't really have a, a you know, a tight connection. Yeah. In fact, you know, I, I tried, I tried intentionally to, to speak to Holly, right? You know, because I knew that uh, a couple of weeks before that, or days before that tribal, I uh, went up to Holly and said, "Hey, what's going on?" And, you know, just try to, you know, find out what you know about her. Yeah. You know, genuinely just to meet her and connect or whatever. Um, and then when we were at tribal. Um, Jeff asked her, he said, Holly, what do you think about Tyrone? Or something like that, right? And she turned and looked at me and said, well, I think Tyrone, he doesn't even talk to me. He thinks he's too good or something. And I was like, oh, oh. You know, I was baffled. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was bizarre, you know, but you know, it was what it was. It's a game, you know, people, whatever, whatever. And, um, you know, but anyway, so we didn't connect. Really, but I, even though I tried earlier, right? Probably should have tried more. Um, Dan and I, I thought Dan and I, I thought we had, you know, somewhat of a connection, but, but I think, in retrospect, I think not so much. 
you know, because I was the guy that was helping him out, you know, um, when he, you know, physical things and stuff. Yeah, when he yeah. needed to, uh, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was that guy. Do you ever look back and kind of wish you voted out uh, Dan instead of Jimmy T? Do you think that would have helped helped you out in the long run? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I, I never thought about that. Yeah, that would have definitely helped me out because I think, um, one, Jimmy was uh, Jimmy's a good dude. He's, he's funny. We laugh about it. I mean, <laughs> early on, feelings were hurt and everything. Everybody was all in the game. I mean, you can yeah. vote it out, you know. You got, you got, you know, emotions, and people, oh, you betrayed me, and da, 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 da. and some people carry that stuff even after years after the, you know, the game. But it's a game, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a game of defeat and whatnot. But um, yeah, I definitely wish um, we could kept Jimmy around, <laughs> you know, and I would have lasted longer as well. Mm -hmm. and I think we would, we would made a cool little uh, uh, alliance, if you will. Oh yeah, that would have been a great thing to see. Um, let's go. Let's put, let's play the what if game, if you will. Um, the tribes don't switch. How safe are you? And right. do you definitely think you would have made the merge? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Because I think um, let's see, who was it? It was oh yeah, I think so for sure. Um, because uh, Jill and I connected pretty good. Um, who else was there? They took Jill, Marty, and um, uh, Jane, right? Mm -hmm. They took Jill, Holly, I'm sorry, Jill, Holly, Marty, and Jane. Yeah, probably so. I think uh, maybe Jill um, and Marty at some point we would have had a we probably would have connected at some point. Marty and I didn't really uh, hit up. What's your, like, your official opinion on Marty? Did you like the way he played the game? Did you like him as a person? Uh, he played the game. I think he played the game well uh, as a person in the game. In the game, I didn't care for him very much, his attitude, you know. But that was in the game. I mean, after, like I said, after keeping in the game, mm -hmm. people behave a little differently than they might outside. We haven't had a great amount of dealing since then, but, you know, it is what it is. In the game, no, I didn't care for it, you know, but that was then, and, you know, now we, we might communicate, we communicate, but not often at all. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a different different energy, you know. Mm -hmm. but I, you know, I met some, uh, met some cool people that I otherwise wouldn't have met, you know. So, but I, I definitely think um, I would have made the merge. Uh, what do you think exactly – was the thing that made it that they kept Nayanka over you? I think it, it might have been, um, well, the, the, the kids, the younger folks were playing the game, like I said, you know, aggressively. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to stick, stick together. I think it was more that, and, and, and I was a threat. Personally, I mean, you know, in retrospect, I think I might have been a threat. <laughs> Excuse me. One, because, um, you know, I was the so-called leader of the tribe, right? Mm -hmm. And... And then, um, uh, you know, size and stature, perception, you know, like during the edit, it made it look like I was playing uh, general or, you know, a dictator, but that is, it didn't happen that way at all. You know what I'm saying? I, um, I told them when they came over, I said, hey, it's no more Espada tribe, it's, it's, it's Espada slash LaFleur. What, what I'll do is just tell you how we had been doing it. But, you know, you guys can tell us how you've been doing yours, too, and you might have a better way of doing certain yeah, things. Yeah. What we had did is this. And then we can, we can merge ideas and, you know, uh, it's a union and whatnot. That was, that was the way that went down. And even like the chicken paper, it made it look like, you know, it made it, it, made it look like I, I was taking chicken from everybody. But, no, I made sure I let everybody eat first, right? Yeah. Now, no, I, I didn't think the chicken, you know, I thought we should have maybe kept the chicken for egg production. Which I agree with. But, I want to say I agree with you on that. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I told him, you know, that, but I didn't, and I said, but I'm just one opinion. You know, that's what I said. I said, I'm just one opinion. And if you guys want to kill the chicken, that's what we'll do. And I didn't attach anything to it. I was totally cool with it, right? So, <laughs> you know, when they kill the chicken, um, you know, of course I want to, I'm going to eat it, you know, but anyway, they, they, they made it, they made it look, the head it made it look like I was taking all the chicken. What happened was I, I said, go ahead and eat up. You know, and that's what I do at, at work. 
you know, I make sure the guys on my crew that I supervise, the firemen that I supervise, uh, um, that they eat before me. If we go out, you know, to lunch at a, a place to eat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing I did there, you know, as a leader, if you will. And at the, at the, after everyone ate, I, uh, I took what was left, some of what was left, and some people even put a, a, a piece of chicken back that had meat on it, like a bowl, but it had meat on it. Man, I was getting the gristle off of that stuff. And I was, you know, and I was actually proud a little bit, being funny. Right, I was being funny. That's why I was doing that. You know, I was just trying to. That's me. You know, the silly guy. Yeah. Right. And and people didn't, don't get to see that a lot. I mean, you saw some of my facial expressions, but I'm the silly guy. You know, I was like, I mean, you know, so that's what that was about for me. Um, you know, it has to do with the editing and all of that. Stuff. I, I don't know. Well, that was actually going to be my, ne my but, next question. Was what did you think of your overall edit? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think the edit was was cool, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they tried to make it look like I was blindsided. But I'm telling you, before that tribal council, when they came over, that day I think I I pulled each to the side. I looked at it and I said, "Whoo!" Mm -hmm. I looked who was there because me and he didn't really connect in the game either. Mm -hmm. Too much, right? But um, anyway, um, it was me, Marty. I'm sorry, me, Eve, Holly, and Dan. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh shit, right? I don't know how many funny years that has got my back, right? And I'm like, well, of the three, I think Eve might be the one to try to connect with, you know. Um, and but I actually, of the three, I thought, actually, of the three, I thought maybe. Uh, Dan would have my back, you know what I'm saying? That's what I, I thought we were, you know, a little bit. Of those three, I had a connection with. We never went up and said, hey, you want to be in my life? It's me and you. You know, I never did that. <laughs> but, you know, um, so I said, E, what I did was I said, E, um, I need you to connect. Can you connect with Holly? Because I tried and it didn't go well, you know. And she was like, um, well, I don't know, because I guess they had a little difference as well. Well, you know, so, um, so why didn't people get along with Eve? Because you're not the first Survivor player to tell me that they had a hard time getting along with Eve. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I, I think just maybe um, just a different personality. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not saying I didn't get along with her. I'm just saying we just didn't engage. In the game. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? We, did, we didn't really have conversations or anything of that nature. You know, we didn't talk too much mm -hmm. to one another. It wasn't that we intentionally didn't, you know, just like me and Jane. Jane and I didn't really have a lot of conversations, but, you know, it was what it was. You know, mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at, the, at the reunion, she looked at me and she, she looked back at me. I mean, at the finale, she looked back at me and said, yeah, Tyrone and I had an alliance and he... He flip flopped on me or something, and I was like, huh? <laughs> like, where did that meeting, where did that meeting take place? You know what I mean? But it was, it was, it was a little bit of that going on, and I was like, wow. It was kind of baffling to me that, you know, people, everybody had an alliance with me, and I never knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like how I thought you had an uh, yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, y'all tripping, no? Because the person who, 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 it was not even ever official, you know, it was all a, uh, an assumption, right? Um, um, Jill and I had a conversation that was probably the strongest, and we, because we, you know, we kind of thought alike, and I didn't have similar values and whatever, whatever, and both of us, you know, still, you know, athletics like to compete and all of that stuff and whatever, you know, and Jill's pretty cool. We, 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 uh, we've talked since then, you know. Um, and, and, me and Jimmy connected as well. You know, at the time, at the time, the decision about Jimmy had to do with how it was affecting the uh, whole tribe, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, yeah, it was sort of, you know, in my mind at that time, that's what the decision was about. You know, if, if I had to do it again, um, what I, what I have, and I didn't hope. Jimmy, see how people would want to put that on me. No, I was just hey <laughs> you know. Yeah. It takes a majority. I was, I was eight. One. 
Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, come on, don't put that on me. You know, um, but it was what it was, you know. And, um, and a- afterwards, initially, it wasn't, uh, you know, I don't think too happy. Um, and that's okay. I wouldn't have been either. But, you know, like when I got voted out, I, I kind of, I anticipated, I called it. Of course, that didn't make the edit, but, you know, but I said, e, and it was kind of right off the street, I said, e, it, it, it's not a question of if or when, you know, do you think you can uh, connect with, you know, Holly, and maybe I should have made that happen myself, you know what I mean? Can you do okay. any celebrity impressions? Oh, <laughs> where'd you get that from? That is, that is random. Um, oh, yeah. Um, oh, hmm. I don't know. No, nah, I, I can't say that I, I do. There's, yeah. there's no characters you can imitate? Anybody alive, dead, fictional, non-fictional? I can't think of anybody, man, because I don't do that, you know? <laughs> um, you said you were the silly guy. Oh, my? Yeah, I'm the silly guy, but shit, I, I, don't, I don't, I can't think of nobody, just think of somebody who's, you know, who's, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, uh, actually, in the game, people are just funny. I, um, I uh, imitated, uh, uh, impersonated Mark Burnett, you know, executive producer. Mm-hmm. That was kind of funny. Um, and that was funny. It had everybody laughing the first night when we were, you know, it was raining on us, uh, like, man. And, you know, we were laughing and stuff, <laughs> you know. Okay, okay, guys, make sure to stay hydrated, okay? Stay hydrated. Because you, you, you don't want to you don't want to get out of the game, you know. <laughs> you know, we were, we were just having fun, man. That's all. But see, that's, that's, that, that, that's yeah. good enough. That's good enough for this podcast. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that that was about it. Oh, you know. Are you? Do you still watch Survivor? Yeah, I've watched. Uh, you know, I've been watching uh, this season. You know, and and I, I think as a as a. a past member, a past, you know, survivor, you watch, watch the watch the game with different set of eyes than the general public. Mm-hmm. Well, what do because, you look for? Well, for me, for me, the thing is, I know the power of editing, and because there's a ton of stuff that, that happens that doesn't make the show, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, Jimmy T and I spent, like, uh, I think it was two days trying to build a raft, you know, so we can go get out in the water and go fishing. You know what I mean? Uh, but that never made it. You know, there were times when some funny stuff happened. You know, at least I thought it was funny. You know, it didn't happen. You know, I said a prayer pretty much before every challenge. You know what I mean? Um, that was that was cut out. You know, so things like that. It happens. And then there's also, you know, maybe some certain conversations that were cut out. You know, because at the end of the day, they're doing a TV show. So they have to make it interesting and entertaining. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, that's you one know. of the things people talk about is how they have to edit people in a certain way in order to justify them being voted off. For instance, someone like you, you kind of had to be painted as almost a dictator in order t- for the viewer to feel justified in you being voted off. Exactly. It's a dictator and a chicken hawk. Yeah, you know, that's, what, that's what it was. And I, I wasn't that guy. I was like, oh, this is some BS. You, know <laughs> you were watching so, that you know, as a <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't know. You know, I didn't know they were going to do that. And I was being silly when I was eating that chicken and I was, you know, and that ball and actually it was the same chicken ball and they just played it from a bunch of different angles, right? And um, little did I know that they were going to use that. I wasn't thinking that far ahead. You know? um, so, yeah, that, that, they have to justify the vote for sure. Like, uh, I think they said that I was blindsided. I do remember right? that. I was going to ask you if you were blindsided, but you already said you weren't. Nah, man. I guess, well, that depends on what they consider blindsided. Now, to me, blindsided means when you get voted out and don't expect to. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, shit. Okay, out of the, out of the, uh, what was it, six people or seven people that were left from my tribe, from the older tribe, Shit, a couple of my potential connects went to the other side. And I was like, oh, gee whiz, look who I'm left with. You know, <laughs> people I never connected with, really. You know, and, you know, whatever. But I think in retrospect, for sure, it was a, a, probably a mistake for me uh, to vote out Jimmy T. 
But, you know, it is what it is. You know, shit happens. You got to make a decision one way or the other, right? Made a decision, and so, it could have worked out great. You could be a millionaire right now. Yeah, but who's to say? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it, it's all ifs and buts. And, and it's one of them things, one of those games that you can play your best game, but you can't predict everything. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, oh. look at people like Rob Cesarino, who in his season clearly was the best player, but he still didn't win. Would you like to plug Reality Rally for a little bit? Uh, yeah. Well, we'd like to ask everyone to come out. Or actually, some of the, your Survivor uh, past cast, Survivor cast members um, have up on their uh, Facebook pages or what have you um, um, the soliciting donations for Michelle's Place, which is a breast cancer center in a... Uh, California, Temecula, California, and uh, the Reality Rally, I believe some of that's a fundraising event, some of the, uh, that's where a bunch of, uh, you know, reality stars or whatever, personality, uh, get together, and, and we have a good time, we play games, and it's pretty, it's pretty good, this will be my first time, so I'm excited and looking forward to doing it, you know, uh, and actually you can go to realityrally.com, realityrally.com, and that will uh, give you all more information on it. Can you, you know. tell us more about this charity, Michelle's Place? I'm sorry? Can you tell oh, us? Oh, yeah. Well, let's say it's a, it's a, I mean, it's, um, basically it's a, uh, and like I said, you can get more information on the website, but it's a uh, breast cancer uh, center, um, and I believe, I could be, don't quote me, but I believe it, it helps, it's uh, more for, geared towards uh, women who um, do not have medical insurance, mm -hmm. I believe, but I could be totally wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, for all those people that are interested in Reality Rally, be sure to go to the website realityrally.com. And you can also find Tyrone's page and donate money to him so that way he can raise enough money. And all this money that you donate goes straight to the charity. None of it goes into any of the people who works on the project's pockets. So it's a great cause, and I hope all you listeners out there donate. Mm, awesome. Yeah. Appreciate that. Once again, thank you so much for coming on. No worries, brother. Right. Have a great one, all right?